No social or revolutionary movement succeeds without a core of people who will not betray their vision and their principles. They are the building blocks of social change. They are our only hope for a viable socialism. They are willing to spend their lives, if they have to, as political outcasts. They are willing to endure repression. And they will not sell out the oppressed and the poor. They know that you stand with all of the oppressed, people of color, in our prisons and marginal communities, the poor, unemployed workers, our GBLT community, undocumented workers, the mentally ill, and the Palestinians, Iraqis, and Afghanis who we terrorize and murder. You stand with all of the oppressed, or you stand with none of the oppressed. They know that when you fight for the oppressed, you get treated like the oppressed. They know this is the cost of the moral life, a life that is not abandoned even if it means you are destined to spend generations wandering in the wilderness, even if you are destined to fail. I was in East Germany, Czechoslovakia, and Romania in 1989 during the revolutions, or in the case of Romania, perhaps an inter-party putsch. These revolutions were spontaneous outbursts by an enraged population that had had enough of communist repression, mismanagement, and corruption. No one, from the dissidents themselves to the ruling communist party elites, anticipated these revolts. They erupted as all revolutions do, from the tinder that had been waiting years for a spark. These revolutions were led by a handful of dissidents who until the fall of 1989 were marginal and dismissed by the state until it was too late as inconsequential. The state periodically sent security to harass them. It often ignored them. I'm not even sure you could call these dissidents an opposition. They were profoundly isolated within their own societies. The state media denied them a voice. They had no legal status and were locked out of the political arena. They were blacklisted. They struggled to make a living. But when the breaking point in Eastern Europe came, when the ruling communist ideology lost all credibility, there was no question in the minds of the public about whom they could trust. The demonstrators that poured into the streets of East Berlin and Prague were well aware of who would sell them out and who would not. They trusted those such as Václav Havel, who had dedicated their lives to fighting for an open society, those who had been willing to be condemned as non-persons and go to jail for their defiance, those who stood for something that no one at that time saw as either practical or possible. Our only chance to overthrow corporate power comes from those who will not surrender to it, who will hold fast. will hold fast to the causes of the oppressed, no matter what the price, who are willing to be dismissed and even revived by a bankrupt liberal establishment, who have found within themselves the courage to say no, to refuse to cooperate. The most important issue in this election does not revolve around personal traits of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. 
revolves around the destructive dynamic of unfettered and unregulated global capitalism, the crimes of imperialism, and the security and surveillance apparatus. These forces are where real power lies. Trump and Clinton will do anything to serve them. It is up to us to resist. We must refuse to be complicit, even in the act of voting, with the fossil fuel industry savaging of our ecosystem, endless war, oppression of the poor, including the one in five children in this country who are hungry, the evisceration of constitutional rights and civil liberties, the cruel and inhumane system of mass incarceration, and the state-sponsored executions of unarmed people of color in our cities. <laughs> Julian Bender reminded us that we can serve two sets of principles, privilege and power, or justice and truth. The more we make compromises with those who serve privilege and power, the more we diminish the capacity for justice and truth. Our strength comes from our steadfastness to justice and truth, a steadfastness that accepts that the corporate forces arrayed against us may crush us, but that the more we make compromises with those whose ends are privilege and power, the more we diminish our strength and our capacity to effect change. Karl Popper in the Open Society and its enemies wrote that the question is not how do you get good people to rule. Popper says this is the wrong question. Most people attracted to power, he wrote, have rarely been above average, either morally or intellectually, and often below. Hmm. The question is how do we build forces to restrict the despotism of the powerful? <laughs> there, is a moment, there is a moment in Henry Kissinger's memoirs, do not buy the book. <laughs> where Nixon and Kissinger are looking out at tens of thousands of anti-war protesters who have surrounded the White House. Nixon had placed empty city buses in front of the White House to keep the protesters back. Henry, he said, they are going to break through the barricades and get us, and that is exactly where we want people in power to be. That is why, although he was not a liberal, Nixon was our last liberal president yes. because he was scared of moments. <laughs> and if we cannot make the elite scared of us, we will fail. Exactly. The rise of Donald Trump is the product of the disenchantment, despair, and anger caused by neoliberalism and the collapse of institutions that once offered a counterweight to the powerful. Trump gives rage to the legitimate rage and betrayal of the white underclass and working poor. His right-wing populism, which will grow in virulence and sophistication under a Clinton presidency, mirrors the right-wing populism rippling across much of Europe, including in Poland, Hungary, France, and Great Britain. If Clinton wins, Trump, will become the dress rehearsal for American fascism. Wow. A bankrupt liberal class, as was true in Yugoslavia when I covered the war, and as was true in Weimar Germany, is the great enabler of fascism. Liberals in the name of the practical refuse to challenge parties that betray working men and women, 
in the name of political expediency. Our inability to build a counterweight to the Democratic Party after it abandoned the working class with the passage of the North American Free Trade Agreement in 1994 was our gravest mistake. Right. Hillary Clinton, who embodies a detested neoliberal establishment, can barely fend off one of the most imbecilic and narcissistic candidates in American history. <laughs> demagogue with brains and political skill, she would lose. And if we do not defy the neoliberal order, embodied by Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party elites, if, as with every other election cycle, we surrender, we ensure the conditions for a terrifying right-wing backlash that will be harsh and the violent mechanisms that will be used to crush the little political space we have left. The tactic of strategic voting begs the question, strategic for whom? Our money drenched, heavily managed, elections are little more than totalitarian plebiscites to give a veneer of legitimacy to corporate power. That's right. As long as we signal that we are not a threat, established order, as long as we participate in this charade, the neoliberal soul will continue toward its frightening and inevitable conclusion. Alexis de Tocqueville correctly saw that when citizens can no longer participate in a meaningful way in political life, political populism is replaced by a cultural populism of sameness resentment, and mindless patriotism, and by a form of anti-politics he called democratic despotism. The old forms of democracy are used to mask a political system the philosopher Sheldon Wolin calls inverted totalitarianism. We must build structures of open defiance to the corporate state. It may take as long as a decade for us to effectively confront corporate power. Two years. But without a potent counterweight <laughs> to the neoliberal order, we will be steadily disempowered. Every action we take, every word we utter, must make it clear that we refuse to participate in our own enslavement and our own destruction. Ecosystem means resistance cannot be delayed. Perfect. Our success will be determined not by the number of votes we get in this or any election, but by our ability to stand unequivocally with the oppressed. <laughs> the enemies of freedom throughout history have always charged its defenders with subversion. The enemies of freedom, freedom have often convinced large parts of a captive population to parrot back mind-numbing cliches to justify their rule. Resistance to corporate power will require fortitude and ability to march to the beat of our own drum. If we succeed, we will be met with harsher and harsher forms of state repression and vitriolic attacks from the mass media. No revolutionary abandons, no matter what the cost, those he or she defends. We cannot betray those murdered by police in our marginal communities. We cannot betray the courageous dissidents, Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning,
Zumbia Abu Jamal. Yeah. Because they have not betrayed us. That's right. We cannot betray the dissidents in North Dakota or define a fossil fuel industry. melting the polar ice caps and raising carbon emissions to over 400 parts per million. We cannot betray the 2.3 million men and women locked in cages across this nation for years. We cannot betray the Iraqis and Afghanis whose lives we have destroyed by state terror. We cannot betray the Palestinians. If we betray them, we betray ourselves. We cannot betray the ideal of a popular democracy by pretending this contrived political theater is free or fair or democratic. <laughs> their game. We cannot play by their rules. Our job is not to accommodate the corporate state. Our job is to destroy it. Yes. 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 We think we are the doctors. Alexander Harrison told anarchists of another era. We are the disease. <laughs> the state seeks to control us through fear, propaganda, wholesale surveillance and violence. These are the only forms of social control it has left. The lie of neoliberalism has been exposed. Its credibility has imploded. The moment we cease being afraid, the moment we use our collective strength, as I saw Eastern Europe in 1989, to make the rulers afraid of us is the moment of the system's downfall. So, go into the voting booth on Tuesday and do not be afraid. Vote with your conscience. Vote green. If we win 5%, we win. becomes the building block for the years ahead. A decade ago, Ceresa, the ruling party in Greece, was polling 4%. And after you vote, join some movement, some protest, some disruption, Black Lives Matter, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel, an anti-fracking demonstration. Because courage is contagious. Revolutions begin, as I saw in East Germany, with a few Lutheran clergy holding candles as they march through the streets of Leipzig. It ends with half a million people protesting in East Berlin, the defection of the police and the army to the side of the protesters and the collapse of the Stasi state. But revolutions only happen when a few dissidents decide they will no longer cooperate when they affirm what we must affirm, when, as Hobble said, they choose to live in truth. We may not succeed, so be it. At least those who come after us, and I speak as a father, will say of us, they tried. The corporate forces that have, in the, have us in their death grip will destroy our lives. They will destroy the lives of my children. They will destroy the lives of your children. They will destroy the ecosystem that makes life possible. We owe it to those who come after us not to be complicit in this evil. 
We owe it to them to refuse to be good Germans. <laughs> and in the end, I do not fight fascists because I will win. I fight fascists because they are fascists. Yeah. <laughs> Hard. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else, else is a challenge. Else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um. So, so, so I'm ready. For I'm ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was for, built this. for this. I think that, I think we, that all we all have a purpose in life. In life. And mine is going to take on a test that most that most of back away from. Back away from. from. That impossible. That people say it's impossible. I see.